everybody. Um, Happy New Year. It's New Year's Eve today. So by the time you'll be watching this, it will be 2024. Happy New Year. I hope that everyone has had a manageable 2023. To say good feels like maybe we're reaching for something a little unrealistic at the moment. Um, how are you all? How is everyone's Christmas? Um, if you're like me, I'm sure you're really glad it's over. And that's quite a nice feeling, actually. Um, I am vlogging, as we can see. I'm just trying to make myself a lemon and hot water, which is all I ever um, drink. How do I look? Look, I've got a mark on me. I do have a mark on me. Oh, that's from drying it on a radiator, I think. Silly. Um, I thought that I'd talk through, use this vlog to talk through some favourite things of the year. Generally, I've put it into different categories. Oh, this is what I got for Christmas, by the way. This is my grown-up Christmas present. A fancy knife. Um, I have been using blunt knives for too long. And then when you get a really sharp one, it's like, oh, wow, I really have been wasting my, my time with all these blunt knives. It's so much better. Right, so I've made my, made my pot of tea. Um, I... Yeah, I'm going to talk through different favourite things of the year. I'm going to start with books. Um, I read less this year than usual. Um, I'm not sure why, really. I just guess... I don't know why. But I know that I definitely have read a few more much longer books than I would normally read. Um, but my first favourite one to talk about is David Wonorowicz's In the Shadow of the American Dream, which is his diary. I think he's probably my favourite writer of all time, if I had to pick one. Um, he was a writer, photographer, artist, painter, who um, worked out in New York in the 80s predominantly and kept diaries for nearly all of his life. He died when he was 37 of AIDS, I think in, I think in 1992, I want to say. Um, and yeah, his, his diaries are just incredible. They talk about all sorts of things, really tragic things like the AIDS epidemic in that time in America, but also just about his romances and his family and the artists that he was working with it's just fascinating and I just to, I love his writing so much so that is my first favorite book um my second one is Demon Copperhead which I feel a lot of people would put on their lists this year by Barbara Kingslover which is like a modern day David Copperfield um it's a big book and I often sometimes think when you read a big book you leave feeling quite attached to it because you've stayed with the character for a long time or I do anyway um, so the character in it is called Demon Copperhead um, and I definitely felt very bonded to him throughout reading it. I don't think it needed to be as long as it was, um, but other than that it was great and a really, really enjoyable read that I would have recommended to lots of other people. Um, right, my next favourite is, I've just finished this, Empire of Pain by Patrick Radden Keith. Um, He's a really, really, really great non-fiction writer. I'm not great at reading non-fiction, find it really hard to concentrate, I lose my way in it. But his books almost read like fiction the way he does it. And um, this is about the Sackler dynasty and about OxyContin. And it was just so interesting. A really, really, really devastating read overall. But really interesting. And I've just retained so much of it. Um, there's also so many dramatizations at the moment on like things like dope sick and there's um a uh, is it called the pharmacist a documentary on netflix maybe a really great um documentary which lots of you recommended called the beauty in the bloodshed there's a lot to watch at the moment about the sacklers and about oxycontin which i then enjoyed reading this and then going on to watch those things as well so i really really recommend this it was it's a good 500 pages. It was quite a slog to get through, especially for someone who's not that great at reading nonfiction. But I, um, yeah, I loved it. And I definitely want to read more of his writing because it just is my kind of nonfiction. Um, and a really, it is definitely a devastating read, but a really interesting topic. And then the last two books, which I'll talk about briefly because I don't have either of my copies here, unfortunately, um, are Visit from the Goon Squad by Jennifer Egan. Um, which I raced through. Um, by the way, I haven't picked books that have come out this year for this. This is just my favourites that I've read this year. Um, but yeah, I raced through that. I enjoyed it so much. The last chapter I didn't love, unfortunately, and apparently the sequel 
focuses very much on the that theme that the last chapter introduces so i'm not going to be reading the sequel i don't think but i it was great i liked how all the characters crossed over and how many characters she introduced and yet you still feel super attached to them there's so many where i was like oh, i want to know more about that and i want to know what happens next and um yeah really really good read i read it on holiday actually and really enjoyed it um, and my final one that I've really enjoyed this year is The Virgin Suicides by Geoffrey Eugenides. Eugenides. I have Middlesex to read on here by him. A friend gave me her copy, um, but I've not read that yet. So I, I um, will maybe read that next year. But um, The Virgin Suicides was so good. And then again, a really great film to watch after it. I really enjoyed the, like, I think it's Sofia Coppola that, Coppola that does... Um, that directed the Virgin Suicides. In fact, it definitely was. And it's got a great soundtrack by Air as well. Um, and was really enjoyable to like watch that come to life after having read it. Um, it's definitely a, seen as a classic and for very good reason. So those are my five favourite books of the year. Um, I'm gonna drink my tea. I'm cooking tonight, I'm hosting and cooking. So I'm sort of prepping and sorting the house out a little bit. Um, so I'm going to get sorted with stuff and keep sharing favourites and things as I get ready throughout the day. She's got everything she needs. She's an artist. She don't look bad. Got everything she needs She's an artist She don't look back She can take the dark out of the night time And paint the day time black You will start oh. standing Hello everybody I think it's the 4th of January now, who woke up with tonsillitis on New Year's Day. So I've been laying low, I've got a cold sore now, still full of cold, still got tonsillitis, I'm on antibiotics. So I've been laying low and resting up because I have felt so unwell. I haven't had tonsillitis in a long time and forgot how bad it could be. Um, so yeah, I've just been resting a lot and being good and healthy and wholesome and just sleeping and drinking lots of liquids and all of those great things. So I apologise for how rough I look, but it is a representation of how I feel. Um, but I'm going to continue working through my list of favourite things. We're in no fit shape to show beauty products or fashion products right now, really. Um, but I am, I'm in a fit shape to talk about things generally just my general list of favorites um i'm going to start with my majuri hoops which i've been wearing since i've been wearing them for that long november maybe um but i never take them out and i've worn different varying types of majuri hoops over the years these should be healed soon i got these pierced at the majuri store in um new york and i've had a few piercings from them before and they are so good that I so find it really hard for piercings in my calf bridge to heal. But whenever I've got one there, for some reason, it's gone really well, healed really well. And I'm hoping that when these are healed up, which should be soon, they send you an email to tell you when, um, I'm going to get some more of these hoops and put them in there and then maybe even get two more up above and kind of fill this ear up. But these gold hoops are just great. They're so simple. They're the perfect size. I never take them out. Um, I sometimes I take the bottom ones out and like mix up that earring in my bottom lobe but and then that they stay in there all the time and they are so good so 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 good so I really 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 recommend them um yeah I'll link those in the description box actually and I did at one point have a discount code I uh, maybe I'll see if I can get a new one and if that happens I'll also write that in the description box Right, another general favourite, which has been a big one of this year, are these little BLFT coffee pots. I think this is the two cup one, which I used to make one cup. Um, it's very, I've just washed it, but it's this is still it after he's been cleaned. He's very dirty and just burnt and singed. And he melted a bit here. 
So they, they did well, most things in my care end up having a lot of wear and tear to them. And I also have this big one. I think this is a six cup one. I use this for two coffees. So definitely making two strong coffee. And then for Christmas, my mum got me this beautiful Alessi one that I'm just scared to use because I don't, this was the, the same color silver when I got it. They start off very shiny and light. Um, <clears throat> and I don't want this to face the same fate. I think this looks great, really worn in. But this, I think, looks great and like a space age object <clears throat> and needs to be really shiny. So I'm using it sparingly, but it's beautiful. I'll link them both. But this just makes the best coffee. And then I just use my little milk frother to make like a flat white every morning. And I genuinely often prefer the coffee that I manage to make at home with this than the coffee that I would go and buy in a shop. Um, and it makes your whole kitchen smell like brewed, freshly brewed coffee. It's so nice. One of my most um, enduring favourites of this year and the year before is Crosswords. This is my crossword book that I do at home here. It's the Times one, book three. I wish I could say I'd completed book one and two and I'm on, I'm on to the trilogy, but that would be a lie. I haven't actually ever done one of these crosswords the whole way through without having to Google one of the answers. They are hard. But it is one of those things that you notice yourself getting a lot better at. I also do the New York Times one on my phone on flights um, and try and remember to do like the mini on there every single day. Um, and this has been such a weirdly social thing to just have out on this table. It's constantly here, open on the table. And people always socialise in the kitchen and will come and sit down and often be like, have a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever and start doing a crossword. Um, and it's just actually odd, oddly social. It's been so nice to have here. Um, I'm sure you can just get these on Amazon and I'm sure they're really inexpensive. I have a general knowledge one or not, but um, that was impossible. Um, possible for somebody a lot more intelligent than me, but that was not me. Um, so yeah, crosswords, I can't recommend enough. And if you ever do, I do finish some of the New York Times ones without having to look up any of the answers. And the sense of superiority you get from it is unmatched. I'm just um, on my way out, as you can see, wrapped up to the nines. Oh, so it's just a, a cardo truck being noisy outside. Um, just about to sit in a car for an hour. I want to talk about my next general favorite. AirPods in general, I think this is my third AirPod over probably about six years maybe. So they, maybe they're not getting that many points for lasting that long, but there's kind of a lot of compartments you can lose and break within these, I find. Um, these, my last one, my last AirPod Pros that I had, I probably had for about three years, I would say, and they broke and they broke a few weeks ago because the lid stopped like fully closing. Um, so I replaced them with the latest AirPod Pro they're expensive. I think they were like £260 or something. I use them every single day. They are non-negotiable when I'm leaving the house. These, the noise cancelling on these is so, 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 so good. I personally find the AirPod Pros more comfortable than the classic AirPods. But I know lots of people who have that the other way around. Um, but yeah, if you kind of want in good day-to-day -day headphones, this is a really boring favourite as well. But I was really trying to think hard about things that I genuinely use every day, cannot leave the house without um like appreciate every day these every time i put them in i'm like oh my gosh this is just so good you can turn off the um noise cancelling as well which i do if i'm walking on my own at night and things like that you can have it like spatial awareness they basically do if you've got the big over the ear ones they do all the fancy features that the big over the ear ones do um they're great these are my favorites so i'm gonna pop them in my ear and watch sorry of course was, watch Breaking Bad for an hour in the car. Um, well, I'm not driving, I'm, I'm in the back of a car um, because I'm addicted to that now. And um, yeah, bye.
excuse cold sore scab disgusting um i'm gonna get ready and talk through my beauty favorites of 2024 um as we all know my skin no 2023 2023 well wishing time away there um yeah as we all know my skin has been on a very particular journey um over the last year and it's very much still on i think it's getting better um we've got some like redness ignore the cold so i imagine that's not happening because that's not part of that but some like redness around my cheeks definitely finding it's flaring up with how cold it is outside and then coming indoors and then the central heating and everything um so for skincare stuff i don't really have like one particular favorite <clears throat> because i've tried lots of skincare this past year and lots of stuff that's worked and i've recommended it as i've gone on which is what i'm going to continue to do but i think the biggest um general recommendation for me has been going to fefasal which is the facial um facial place facialist facial shop facial place i go to in london in fitzrovia um i get my treatments complimentary but i have paid for them there as well and would pay for them there and they are very expensive and i don't want to necessarily have to say everyone needs to run off and go get a 200 pound plus facial but having gone there i think even if you can go to somewhere that's recommended more locally to you wherever you might be or it doesn't have to be that expensive is speaking to a professional about skin has helped me so much like understanding skin barriers understanding like my hormones a little bit more throughout that your gut health how that can change things and i think having that being lucky enough to go for it regularly and now start doing some laser treatment which at the moment i'm not seeing many results from so i'm going to keep you posted on how that goes but like their welcome um facial their signature facial genuinely makes such a difference and especially when overall my skin is just more congested all the time going and having the extractions makes a massive difference it really then makes your skin glow for a good few weeks afterwards um and like i said just the knowledge that they impart when you go there um like i said i've been getting these treatments for free which i'm very 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 grateful for but they have truly made the biggest 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 difference and i think if you're wanting to invest in your skin um that would be a really great place to go i also really like them they do sell products there but they don't push any of their products at all so you could definitely have a conversation um with them about what ingredients you need to be using for your skin and then then they're not then going to try and sell you like a 100 pound pot of cream before you leave they'll just have that conversation with you and if you want to buy something they're great because they have great brands but they do, really don't push it on you so you could go and have that conversation and then find the skincare that you want from like La Roche Posay or something way more affordable. Um, so yeah, it also is just very relaxing and lovely to go there too. So I think that's been for me the biggest skincare changer over this year, and I'm very grateful for them to have offered me so many free treatments. So that is my big skincare recommendation. Um, at the moment, the, the two things I'm using in the morning, and other than SPF, are this Paula's Choice replenishing moisturizer. I don't think I love it. So it recommended on TikTok and I bought it. Um, but yeah, I'm not wild about that. Also, I've just read on the back, it says PM. Oh no, then it says once or twice daily. Okay, that's misleading. And then this um, Emma Lewis um, eye cream, it's one of the, I've never used one of these products that do the boop thing and it's very satisfying and her packaging is lovely. Definitely too clunky for an eye cream if you're traveling, I think, but I'm not traveling and so I'm really enjoying it. But yeah, my first absolute favourite of this year has been this deodorant. Act. I still don't know how you say it. I should have looked that up. Um, I've never been a natural deodorant girly. If anything, they I feel like my body rejects them and I get smellier. Um, this is the only natural deodorant I've ever, ever, ever had that works. It comes with a big gold key, but it doesn't come, you have to buy as well. Big gold key, but that is in New York at the moment. Um, I actually annoyingly recommend you get it. It's heavy, so it's not great for traveling, but this one I haven't been using with my big gold key and you can see it's like split at the top. Whereas the gold key, you like roll it down and you use the gold key over and over again. So I actually recommend getting the gold key. It's also just really chic and fun. Um, but yeah, this is the 
Pettigrain, Mandarin, Mandarin and Neroli one. And I was sent this, but have also then started buying it myself, which I think is always a really good testament. And I bought this one the other day, which is the After Thunder. Um, but yeah, it's it's just great. You don't need to use very much. You only need like a pea-sized amount. It's kind of a big pea. And you just rub it onto your armpits. Um, it doesn't cause any irritation. Genuinely stops you from being smelly. It's so good. Um, so yeah, no more chemical deodorants for me. I've waved goodbye to those, which I'm very, very, very pleased about. Um, and another body favourite, I wasn't sure what to put for this. And then um, and then the other day I realised I'd finished three bath products from one brand, which is Estee's brand, Mirror Water, which I love. Um, I finished, what have we finished? So we've got, I'm holding on to them so I can show you. But there's a tiny bit left there, there's one more use left in that actually. The Smooth Body Oil, which I love. I put this like, all over my skin when I'm out of the shower. The Scrub, which I use in the bath. It's called the Buff, sorry. The Body Exfoliator. That's completely gone. Everything smells really nice. And then also the bath salts, which I also totally use. I did drop the thing and smash the lid, but that's a me issue. Um, yeah, the Soak Bath Salts. The fragrance of them all is great oh god i love it so much um and yeah i was just literally going working out what were my favorite things and then realized i'd finished all three products from estee i've got some more lined up and i'm going to repurchase the scrub because i've not got any more of that left um but no bigger testament to actually having finished lots of products and especially bath products which i feel can end up lasting your lifetime not to um call you out mum but i'm pretty sure mum has some bath products that she's probably had since like the early 2000s at this point. Um, so I think getting through them is a real good testament. Um, and yeah, they all smell great and feel really, really nice on your skin. So I've been loving those. For makeup wise, I've got two things which I'm gonna use as well. One of them is quite new in my makeup routine because I've started wearing a bit of foundation again, which I haven't worn in a long time. Um, and it's the Glossier Stretch Foundation. I've been a long time fan of the Stretch Concealer um and tend to use that and only that like round the center down into my face and over any spots and then as my skin's not been the best i've been having to use over more and more of my face and then thought hang on this is now when i should be using foundation as opposed to like rubbing a concealer all over my face so i started using this you only need a tiny amount and the coverage is really light very much what you'd expect from glossier like very true to your own skin but at that like you can still see a little bit which i actually really don't mind because i want my skin to look like skin a bit more on there but it's really glowy really light and you don't need very much either so i've been using this every single day and it has been making me feel a lot better in these bleak bleak winter months and just a lot glowier voila pretty good no and then my Final favourite, two of them here. These I think are everyone's favourites this year. The Merit Blushes. This is the one in Beverly Hills, which is lots of people's favourite, but it's not very much, it doesn't change my skin very much. And Cheeky, which I really like. Um, it kind of looks intimidatingly dark. Sometimes I use on my lips as well, which I'm definitely not going to do right now. But you just go boop, boop, and then rub it in. And it's so creamy, it's so nice. It really just, I've made my skin very red there because I've rubbed it too hard. But it really blends really, really nicely into your skin. Um, and yeah, I've been using this every day. I also think this will last an entire lifetime because you just need the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest amount. So there's my two beauty, well, makeup phase, I suppose. Um, and yeah, I'll just finish doing the rest of my makeup and then make a coffee, the number of times I say, and then make a coffee on this YouTube channel. And, and then we've just got fashion, fashion faves and some music to talk about. Um, yeah. Right, I'm jumping about a bit through my favourite categories here, favourites categories. Um, but I put one stop at sunglasses. Um, and J. Crew sunglasses in particular. I wore these and the tortoiseshell version I have, which is the New York 
so 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 much this summer i just tried to find them online they're not the exact ones aren't available anymore but jake we do have a tendency to put things back in stock even once they've discontinued them so hopefully they will do that i will also try and find out from them um but their sunglasses are around 80 pounds and i wore these and the tortoiseshell ones literally every single day in the summer and i'm just gonna do like a quality compare these are a prada pair that i got that were in a very similar style and i had a moment of madness in the airport and bought these i think they're about they're about 400 pounds or something insane and they are like there is a difference in quality these are heavier um, the actual probably like lenses in them are probably a lot better if you're looking at the sun. If only I was looking at the sun, I'm just going to have to imagine what looking at the sun would feel like right now. Um, but yeah, they're heavier. The way they open and close feels nicer. Obviously, you get some Prada Prada branding down the side. Um, there is definitely a difference in quality. Is it a £300 difference in quality? I wouldn't have thought so. Maybe one day we can do a sunglasses testing basics. Um, and I think style wise, I actually even prefer these. And while I did have my moment of madness in the airport, and I'm sure it won't be my last moment of madness in the airport when it comes to buying designer sunglasses, because there's just something about them that speaks to me unnecessarily. Once again, very shallow. Um, I also have a tendency, which I think is quite a common tendency, to lose sunglasses. They generally seem to have a one year lifespan in my ownership before they get left somewhere. Um, and do we really want to be running that risk with 400 pound sunglasses? We do not, especially, when these I actually think look better and like I said I just wore them so 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 much through the summer and absolutely loved them so this is my general my last general general favorite I also believe that because these aren't 400 pound sunglasses I will never lose them I have pairs of sunglasses from like Topshop even that I've had for eight or nine years or something anything that's sort of over 200 pounds I'm gonna lose anything under 100 pounds I wouldn't be able to lose if I tried. That's just the way the world works. So J. Crew sunglasses, these specific ones aren't in stock, but they do have lots of other styles and I wouldn't be surprised if these do come back in stock in the summer. tired looking but I've slept for nine hours so riddle me that I'm gonna just blame central heating and um, coffee's actually about to brew over by the sound of that and um, I am on the final few categories of this video um ending of ow it's hot idiot um ending obviously in my most favorite category of fashion favorites. It's quite hard to pull together. I find with any like yearly favorite stuff, it's then it becomes quite hard to remember anything that you've liked prior to the previous two months you've just lived through. Um, <coughs> so I went through my own Instagram, which is always a really awful task to have to do, um, and pulled together things I've been wearing the most. This is quite a recent purchase, but it's a brand that I've loved very consistently over the years and it's and daughter their knitwear is great i'm doing a testing basics knitwear at the moment and i am going to hopefully include them i'm just waiting for something to come back in stock um because they're expensive i was sent this but i have bought things from them in the past as well um but it's so warm it, this is the cashmere jumper it's considerably warmer than the uniqlo ones that i have 
and I reach for it every single day and the fit of it is great and we all know a navy jumper is just my holy grail really it's my Roman empire as they say um, and I never don't feel good wearing a navy jumper and I know you will probably sit to the back teeth of me wearing them and see me wear them look at that lovely coffee but they just make me feel great so that this is my first favourite it's a bit it's got a little um, sort of lump on it from drying it on a radiator, but it debobbles really well. It's just really, really a great knitwear. So that's my first fashion favorite. And then because I knew I had to start with navy jumper, I work backwards from there to sort of what has been my most favorite and trusty outfit combination that all goes together as well. Now, unfortunately, one of the pieces I don't have here with me in London, um, which is, which is my Our Legacy third cut jeans. Those are in New York, um, but I'll put a picture of me wearing them here and you've seen them a million and one times. I'm just wearing a similar wash of jean today to sort of get the idea, but those, I reach for those every single day, especially through the summer. I've been wearing them a bit less in the winter. They're the most amazing cut. They really got me into like a baggier, lower rise jean, which I really liked which sort of opened up my styling um, jeans in different ways because I've been wearing high-waisted ones for so many years. I'm out of breath as I'm coming up the stairs. It's not good. Wearing them with um, sandals and a tank top. That was me like every single day in the summer. I honestly pulled them on nearly every single morning. And then I would wear them now with my blue knit if I had them with me. And my next favourite, the Kate Bell. It was so expensive that it's like, I bought it in America, I think it's like $500, 400 and something pounds. Um, and I'd wanted it for a while and then just had one of those days where I was like, oh fuck it, I'm just gonna go and buy that really, really, really expensive belt. Um, and I, it's been one, probably my most favorite purchase of the year, I would say. For someone who just loves jeans and a t-shirt, jeans and a jumper or whatever, this has been so good to make outfits feel more interesting. Um, I wear it so often. I love wearing it in an evening as well. Like literally, if I've not got much time, if I'm getting ready to go out, I'm um, wearing jeans and a jumper, jeans and a t-shirt, whatever, just get home and put this belt on, change my shoes maybe, and head out. And suddenly it feels like a whole new outfit. Um, the quality is amazing. It, I love the size of the studs, just, just everything. It is unfortunately kind of worth it. Look at it, it's so good. Very much reminds me of my younger emo days. It was slightly those studded ones with the pointy studs that everyone had. Um, and just like, it's just so much more interesting and so simple and not hard to style at all, but adds so much to it. And yeah, it, obviously it's very expensive for not an everyday bell, but I do think I'm kind of justifying the price because it adds such a lot to outfits and it feels like a very special piece. My next favourite, I'm going to stay stood up here, um, was this jacket. I bought this midway through the year, it's vintage. <clears throat> I'm going to link some similar ones because we can definitely find similar ones online. Um, and again, this was just such a simple piece that I feel so good in whenever I wear. The size of it is great. I love the um, tan suede. The length of the sleeves, the fit on the shoulders, just this just feels so me. This whole combination it was great with navy blue, great with jeans. Um, yeah, it was one of those pieces that just felt like it fitted so seamlessly into my wardrobe, but also added quite a lot um, of outfit options. And yeah, I wear it honestly all the time. I've been wearing under winter coats as well at the moment, which I've been loving. Um, I bought it from a vintage shop in New York, but like I said, I will find some similar ones and I think if you just search, search on vintage for tan suede jackets you'd probably be able to find other ones this was about $110 I think but I actually think you'd be able to find one for a lot cheaper on the internet okay final one the Chanel pumps these are a testing basics purchase they actually came last in testing basics because nobody needs to be spending a thousand pounds on a pair of ballet pumps but having done that and having been the person who did it I have worn them to death I think it is just an unfortunate, true, shallow part of myself that even though 
I can like recommend the other styles more and you really don't need to go spend as much money on a pair of shoes. Once you have parted with that money, you're kind of going to want to get your wear out of the super expensive ones. Um, and these are so comfortable. I've worn these to death. I feel so chic in them. They are truly, truly, truly a forever piece. I don't think you have to go and buy them at all. I really think like the Repetto ones, I think I, think I put those in first place. And I still love those as well. But like I said, having already parted with the money, you do kind of want to wear the expensive ones and get your money's worth. Um, and it just all pulls together for what just feels like an incredibly me outfit of this past year. Um, these obviously aren't quite the right jeans, but they're the most similar ones I have here. Um, and I would continue to wear this over and over and over again now and just change it for boots, obviously, and a coat or whatever to make it more weather appropriate. A t-shirt in the summer. It feels like such a perfect base and one that I've reached for so many times and quite nice that all of my favourites have come together to make this outfit almost uniform like for me I suppose of how often that I would just put this on and feel really really great in it and yeah I think it's really chic. I love the tan with the um, blue wash jeans, all, all of it. I just feel so like myself in this so yes these are my fashion favourites. <laughs> So I've talked about so many things, but I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to end on music very, very quickly. Um, you've listened to four tracks throughout this video, which were four of my favorite from four of my favorite albums of the year. There's five, obviously, and five in each category, but it, the last one was a bit shouty, which I thought maybe you wouldn't appreciate in the middle of a video. Um, first one was "Desire I Want to Turn Into You" by Caroline Polachek. This has been on so many people's favorites lists, and for good reason. Um, on my first listen of it, came out at the beginning of last year. I didn't, I wasn't enamoured by it really. It was like, it was a good th listen through, but I wasn't like, oh my gosh, wow. And then there were so many songs that I kept coming back to and then it really grew and grew and grew on me. Um, and I got to see her live a couple of times as well last year. And I think that really cemented how much I love that album. She's incredible live. Um, next one who I really hope I can see live, she's playing in New York next month, um, is Cat Power. She did an album called Cat Power Sings Dylan, which was a live recording of her play, I think at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Um, covering loads of Dylan songs. I'm a huge, huge, huge Dylan fan and I'm a huge fan of Dylan covers. His voice, I like his voice, but it, it definitely grates after a while. Um, it's very drony and I think there's lots of people that for good reason just won't enjoy listening to Dylan sing. Um, so anyone that covers it well and can kind of like open Dylan up um, to just, I guess, a wider audience and like a woman singing his songs, it was, it's amazing. I made a playlist, which I'll link, of each of the songs she covered then followed by the original by Dylan um, and listening to, through like that she does such an amazing job of covering his songs um, I love her voice generally as well and she does a lot of cover songs always um, nearly all of her albums actually are covers but she's great I love her um, next one New Heart Designs Bad Bad Not Good and Turnstile I love Bad Bad Not Good um, I love nearly all of their records actually I think they're amazing and I've gotten really into turnstiles sort of over the past 18 months um and yeah they're at that it's only three songs on that album so I'm kind of cheating a little bit because it's not a full album but it is so it's like a bit jazzy and turnstile I love his voice and it's got that heaviness in it it's 
it's really, really good. All three songs are three of my most listened to of the last year. And then we have, oh, an ambient record, Danger by Jogging House. When I'm at home, I listen to ambient music all the time. Ambient or like modern jazz or modern classical music, like Mills Fram kind of stuff. So it kind of makes up probably my most listened to genre. Um, so I had to put an amb ambient record in there. For the most part, I just actually listen to playlists. And I will say that I think for me, it is. it does serve as background music. I like listening to it because I can read at the same time or I can work and it doesn't actually distract me. And it makes the house feel really nice and calm. Um, and that album does kind of blend into the background, but that's exactly what I wanted to do. And there's a, the odd bit that will stand out to me. I'm like, oh, that was really beautiful, that part. Um, so yeah, great al ambient record if you're after one. And then finally, um, an album by Wednesday called Rat Called God. Rat Called God? Is it Rat Called God? Um, Rat Saw God, sorry. Um, which I really, really liked. It's kind of been my go-to for when I'm out walking and need to get a bit of a move on, I need a bit of an energy boost. I'm like, come on, let's go, 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 go. One of those. A bit shouty, not too shouty at all. Um, kind of, I really love it when there's a good female vocalist who's sort of a little bit grungy and like a really gravelly voice. I really like that. Um, so yeah, that album, and especially the song Bull Believer on that album, I've been listening to a lot. Um, and that concludes my favourites of 2023, then they said 2024. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, I know it's been a long one, um, but I wanted to include lots of different categories. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, if you made it to this point, I commend you. Um, and I'll see you in the next one, which is going to be Testing Basics.